What's up everybody, Nikki here stepping in for Joel again to give a little bit more of a female perspective here on as many reviews as possible. And today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Instead of talking about the newest, latest, greatest product, we're gonna take a look inside of my gym bag to see my very favorite cannot live without essentials for CrossFit on a daily basis. Just a little bit about my background. I've been CrossFitting now for almost 10 years and have been coaching for almost eight. So been in the game for a while and the things in my bag have changed and evolved a lot over time. Everyone has their preferences. So these are just the things that I love and I'll talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't and what I would change. Let's start with gear, like the equipment you use to get your workouts done. My very favorite, absolutely cannot live without this item, hands down has got to be my belt. This belt from Tupood is maybe like five, maybe even six years old at this point. Um, I still have it. It's a first generation version of this, so it's very different. Mine has a D-ring, they don't have them anymore. Um, and my, my locking mechanism up front has just one piece of metal. Nowadays they have two to really get like a good seal. You like weave it in and weave it back out again. Um, so the newer models are even better. That being said, even though you see that, you know, maybe the, the label is looking a bit frayed or, or the Velcro is kind of dirty. Uh, full disclosure, everything you're gonna see has been used and is dirty and probably covered in dog hair because that's my entire life. Um, but yeah, even though it's, it's definitely got some wear in it, it has never failed and never let me down. And it's still to this day, like just as sticky, just as tacky. The Velcro works just as well. I maybe would upgrade it just because there are really fun new colors out there. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that this belt will still last me a while. The one thing I will say is this is an extra small. Um, I am not an extra small. There's nothing in my, in my life that's extra small about me. Um, so size down, you're going to be smaller than you think in these sizes. The next piece of gear that I can't live without that I love uh, a million times over are my knee sleeves. And not just because they're again sequindy and really kind of like glitz, which is uh, who I am through and through, uh, but because these are the best ones that I found so far for me. So these are again made by Tupood, which if you know them for their belts, you maybe didn't realize that they had other gear out there. I went through a few different iterations of knee sleeves. I had the Ray-Ban ones from games back in 2016. I also had ones from Unbroken Designs for a while, but these ones I got last year and have had zero problems with. The reason why I like them more, other than the fact that they're super cute, is that they're much longer than any other knee sleeve I've had in the past, so they sort of don't budge in that respect. They just, they, they hit a little bit higher on my thigh and a little bit lower on my shin. Um, and I have no problem with them. All right, next in my bag in terms of gear are my lifters. Um, I will be completely honest with you, I grabbed these Reebok Legacy lifters uh, for fashion purposes to begin with because obviously uh, that's important to me uh, because it's fun. I don't wanna sacrifice any sort of quality for, for fashion or to look cute while I work out or lift, but the black and gold caught my eye first. So first and foremost, that's why I ended up going with these. I had Reebok lifters beforehand. I had the second iteration of them. I had had them for like five or six years and never had a problem with them. I like how versatile the new legacy lifters are in the same vein that the old ones were as well and that you can really hit your Olympic lifts but you can still wear them in a workout or in a competition without being really hindered because a lot of the other lifters on the market are in fact much better if all you're doing is lifting and going to meets and competing and doing those things. But if you you want to wear them for CrossFit and you want to be able to say like do double unders and then hit a lift or maybe even box step ups or something like that and then hit a lift. These are these are your go-to and these are my go-to as well. Okay, the next big player for gear is wrist wraps. I will say that I love everything about my wrist wraps because they are brandless. Like here's how I got these guys. Um, I was at a competition seven years ago maybe in Maine and a lady was selling them. She makes them. Uh, she just takes fabric and sews a, sews a string onto the end and she was selling them with her kids for like five bucks. I got them then. I have never looked back. I love them to pieces and I don't think I'll ever stop wearing them unless they they sort of wear out. But I will say this, in terms of the way that these wrist wraps work, there are tons on the market that are just like this, that are just a piece of fabric that you wrap around your wrist that you self-tighten as you go. 
I like these a lot more than I like the rubbery ones with the Velcro. For me, I think it's just a matter of being able to control the tightness around my wrist throughout my entire workout. What I mean by that is oftentimes I find that with the rubbery Velcro ones, the second you lock it in, it's sort of stuck there the entire time and it doesn't move with your wrist and it doesn't follow the natural pattern or motion that your, your wrist and your forearm make. Honestly, it might sound like that's better, right? It might sound like once you lock it in, it's that tight, it's gonna stay that tight the entire time and that's perfect, that's what you want. And that may be true if you're doing a one rep max overhead squat and that is it. But oftentimes for me in a workout, it'll be like repeat snatches and then burpees or something like that. And when I come down for a burpee and my wrist bends back, this regular sort of foldable material moves with the shape of my wrist and the other guys don't. So I like these ones if you can find them. Speaking of snatches and anything that requires a hook grip, I use tape around my thumb. Um, my favorite one so far that I found is the grip tight tape. Uh, Christian Lucero, who's a longtime crossfitter and weightlifter, runs and owns this company. I always think it's cool supporting the athletes in their endeavors outside of just the sport of CrossFit. What I really like about this tape is that it seems to be a really good combination of stretchy and sticky. So it has a lot of movement to it, but it still stays in place. I do also like that, and this is maybe just a me issue, but sometimes when, when thumb tape is too sticky, it leaves a gross residue on your nails. And if you're like me, and you like to get your nails done and you like them to look nice, um, this stuff doesn't stick in a way that sort of ruins your manicure. So that's kind of important to me. Everyone is really particular about the jump rope that they use for CrossFit. For me, I've had this RPM rope now for almost five years and it is just now for the very first time starting to fray to the point where I think I need a replacement cable. It has been my tried and true speed rope since the first time I was able to actually get double unders. And I honestly think that it's only starting to get this worn because I accidentally like, jump roped outside for a while when I first got it, like many of us did before we knew how to take care of our things. So highly recommend the RPM ropes. They sell replacement cables really easily. You can get fitted if you ever see them on site at an event. Um, I've always really liked this one. The last piece of gear I keep in my bag is kind of random, but it's come in super handy. It's this calf sleeve that I actually got kind of by accident. Someone gave it to me at games a few years ago. It's made by Don Joy Performance, and it's actually made to sort of brace the calf and the shin for runners who sometimes get shin splints or you know want to want to have compression there to feel better while they while they work out with all that impact. Um, I don't use it for running. I actually keep it in my bag for whenever we have rope climbs because I do that horrible, inefficient, wrap my leg around the rope situation. And these guys are thick enough so I never ever bang up my shins. If you don't have a need for one of these, I do highly suggest keeping a knee high sock or at least a shin high sock in your bag for the days that rope climbs come up. Uh, even if you are not an inefficient rope climber like me, even if you have a great J hook going on, a lot of times you can get ankle burn uh, or someone else in your class is accidentally wearing shorts or, or really short socks or something and they can borrow it. So throw a long sock or some sort of calf protection in your bag just to help out. Okay, so there's more that goes in your gym bag than just the things you use for your performance, right? There's just the essentials, the everyday things that you need on a daily basis. For me, I have a whole section of little sort of beauty items in my bag that I like to keep around. Um, I keep a travel hairbrush, I keep a lot of extra scrunchies and bobby pins. My absolute favorite type of elastics for my hair are the coiled kinds because honestly they just keep my hair in place the best. There are a whole lot of different ones that you can buy like from Sephora, on Amazon, whatever, that are pretty pricey. Um, I just buy the ones from the drugstore and I've never had an issue. My hair is kind of medium-ish thick. It used to be pretty fine but then I stopped washing it now I bleach it all the time so it's all coarse which is better for me. But yeah, I've never had a problem and I like these a lot more than your traditional elastics. Also in the vein of beauty products that I keep with me are a natural deodorant and a really good chapstick. Um, I like the native natural deodorants. You can buy the little travel sizes and they come in a whole bunch of different scents. They all smell really nice uh, and I haven't had any problems with being stinky, which is really important. My favorite chapstick to throw in my bag is one from a company called Bitch Sticks, which is hilarious, so I love that. Um, but also it's a female owned company and proceeds from all the purchases support women who have gone through domestic violence or sexual abuse prevention programs. So it's 
you know, women supporting women, definitely check them out. Speaking of totally badass woman-owned companies, one of my absolute favorites, and I love to support them, is Chesty. So an unlikely character that I keep in my bag at all times is this cool neoprene kind of pocket sleeve thing that the Chesty made. Um, if you don't have a section of your gym bag that is specifically for gross sweaty clothes, then you know how gnarly changing your shirt after you work out or something like that and then throwing it in can make everything else in your bag. So the cool thing about the neoprene sleeve is that it's really thick, it doesn't stink, and it's easily washable. I actually keep it in my gym bag because my husband likes to change his shirt when he's done, and that thing is disgusting. Sorry, Matt. So instead of just throwing it in my bag, which he would do, otherwise he'd forget it at the gym, I put it in a sleeve like this or a pocket like this, and I don't have any problems, even if I forget to wash it right away when I get home. Then there's protein powder. Everyone keeps some kind of supplement with them, right? I personally prefer to just go home and eat a regular meal after I work out, but if I'm having a long session or if I'm really paying attention to macros or something like that and I need to fit some protein in there, um, I like to keep the Ascent protein with me. We are really particular in my house about what kind of supplements we take and that's because my husband is a pharmacist and does a whole lot of research into the ingredients that they use and the backgrounds of these companies and so I do like the way the Ascent tastes. Um, he's cool with the ingredients in there and so it's kind of a win-win. A couple other random things that live in the bottom of my bag uh, a body spray because homegirl don't like to smell gross, a uh, disposable razor in case I forget to shave under my armpits or something. I don't know, it happens, it makes me feel more comfortable so I throw it in there. Uh, a notebook to record my lifts because I like to put them on my phone but sometimes it's dead or sometimes I just like to see it all on paper. And if you're noticing that one very important piece of CrossFit gear is missing, you're totally right. I don't have a good pair of grips in my bag. I'm looking for a new one but to be honest, I'm really terrible about wearing them anyway. I kind of made my own grips with calluses and things like that and that's not what I would recommend. I would recommend everyone have a really good pair that you can rely on. The last thing I'll talk about is the bag itself. So I'm currently using the new bag from No Surrender Gear. It's a backpack, but it has a ton of really cool features. So pockets on pockets, like pockets everywhere. You can tell it was designed by a team that carries around a lot of random shit because you can sort of have a big pocket on the top with little pockets on the inside. And then there's like a side pocket situation, but it also opens to a front pocket situation. And the reason why they did all that is because you can wear this bag in a number of ways. You can wear it as a backpack as originally sort of designed and intended, but it also has a shoulder strap um, so that you can turn the bag sideways and tuck the straps back on the inside and then you can access a lot of things from side pockets that open up this way too which is pretty cool it's a smaller bag which i like because i don't like to carry around a huge duffel bag to the gym like i want all my shit to fit in one normal size bag i have enough purses and bags to take to work and things like that that i don't need to be overwhelmed but it has a really cool extended piece in the back that you can kind of zip in and out depending on how big you need it. I like it open because I like the design, but also because I can fit extra pairs of shoes in there as well. The other thing I like about this bag is that it's really versatile for things outside of the gym too. So for example, there's a few different sleeves where you could fit a laptop or an iPad or something like that. There's a lot of different ways that you can change how the zippers and pockets are structured so that you can either have small pockets or large pockets to fit everything all at once. And I like that because it means that I could easily pack it for an overnight where I'm gonna be working out or also working or traveling or doing whatever. Small enough to fit under the seat in front of you when you fly, but uh, wide enough to fit all your things all at once. So way to go, no surrender gear. Your bags have been great for a really long time, but I really like this latest iteration, especially because you're catering to a lot of different needs all at once in one bag. Okay, that wraps it up. That's everything that I keep in my gym bag on a daily basis. Pop into the comments and let me know what you think, if you have suggestions for me, or. If if there's something else that I didn't talk about that you want to hear about, I've probably tried it at one point or another. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Joel for having me on.